It was the early 1990s, and Nintendo had just released their brand new 16-bit console, the Super Nintendo. The Super Nintendo utilized a brand new component, and this component was called the Super FX. The new component was used for accelerating the system's graphical display, allowing for the console to render and display 3D objects made out of polygons. From this, Star Fox was born. Star Fox was developed by Nintendo EAD, along with the help of Argonaut Software. It included character designs by Takeo Imura, along with music composed by Hajime Hirasawa. The game started with the idea of using spaceships in an arcade-style shooter, but later it was suggested that they should use animals as the characters to avoid the stereotypical sci-fi. From this combination of ideas, the mercenary group called Star Fox was created. You as the player control the leader named Fox, and with you and your friends are called upon by General Pepper to stop Andros with the new prototype spacecraft, the Arwing. This is where the game begins. You fly the R-Wing through a linear course, shooting down as many enemy fighters as possible to increase your score. The R-Wing allows you to do a barrel roll to deflect enemy fire, boost forward, or slow down to avoid incoming obstacles. Star Fox was very unique at the time, as it did not have a difficulty setting. Rather, you could select from three different paths with each path having their own difficulty and different places for you to visit. This added to its replayability. Star Fox was a great success, scoring around an average of 86% in many of its reviews. Now because of its success, they plan to make a sequel, Star Fox 2. Star Fox 2 plan to change the game style, turning it into a real-time strategy. <laughs> Star Fox 2 added two new characters and also two new ships. During the game's development, Nintendo were working on the new graphics component, roughly called the Super FX2. This upgrade allowed for the console to render better graphics allowing for the Star Fox 2 to add more details into their models. On the map screen, you could move two of your selected characters anywhere, but when you did, the game timer starts and the AI kicks in. The aim of the game was to take control of all of the planets under Andros's control and destroy all of his battleships, while at the same time they are trying to destroy Corneria. With all of the new ideas and the new playstyle, it would have made for an interesting gaming experience. However, this was not to be, 
due to the Nintendo's new re console release of the Ultra 64, which is now known as the Nintendo 64. As sad as it was, according to Dylan Cuthbert, the game was completely finished, and eventually ROM dumps were made. These ROMs were picked up by the fans and translated into English, and eventually posted up on ROM sites. Even though the game was never released, many of its ideas moved across to the next game, Star Fox 64, or to people in Australia and Europe, Lilac Wars. This game reinvented the whole franchise, with its new storyline and its massive graphical makeover, from coloured polygons to texture 3D models. Just as Dylan said earlier, the game included many ideas from Star Fox 2, with the, with the main idea being the introduction of a new mercenary group called Star Wolf. Who are you guys? Oh. We're Star Fox! You'll never defeat Andros! Star Fox 64, however, kept the old map style, but depending on how you did in the level before, it would reroute where you would travel. The R-Wing model changed, adding four G diffusers, which allowed for the craft to once again do the famous barrel roll, and could now do somersaults and u turn The game was a massive success scoring 90% average rating by reviewers, and because of this, Star Fox became one of Nintendo's flagship titles. However, the Star Fox series would never be seen again, until the GameCube came out. Don't ever give up, my son. The GameCube had two Star Fox title releases, the first of which was Star Fox Adventures, and the second was Star Fox Assault. In all the other Star Fox games, the main mode of transport was the army, but in Star Fox Adventures you hardly feel the army at all. Star Fox Adventures to a more Legend of Zelda RPG approach. This game was originally called Dinosaur Planet and had no involvement with the Star Fox series. However, thanks to the game's huge anthropomorphic designs, they changed the name and added it to the Star Fox series. Because this became a Star Fox game, they added a new character named Crystal to the Star Fox universe. This game received some very harsh comments. Most of them were complaints about how you not fly the army as often as you did in the other game. Even though these comments, the game still scored an 80 out of 100 score, which is pretty good. Star Fox Assault was the next game to be seen. This game took place one year after the events of Star Fox Adventures. The game starts you off by trying to fight the last of Andros' fleet, when suddenly you are attacked by an android. Star Fox Assault sticks with the old gameplay style, with the few levels of you flying the Arkham and others giving you free range over the entire level. And only one more to go. Keep moving and waste it. The times were changing, and the developers did away with the old map design 
Instead, having to select the difficulty before he started the short linear story. This game was still great with the added benefit of being developed by the makers of the Ace Combat series. With many saying that the game had a great feel with its epic music. However, this did not help, as the game still got mixed reviews, with many saying the free range controls were very good. Star Fox Command changes the game's style yet again, turning it into a turn based time trial arcade shooter. The game was pretty simple. On the map screen, you could control your fighters to move to cities, attack enemy fighters, or intercept missiles. All the while, the enemy is trying to destroy your carrier ship, named the Great Fox 2. This game takes a whole new spin on things, with there being many paths to take and many options to choose from, giving the game up to 9 endings. But the developers say that this is the end of the story, making many fans very confused, with many of them hoping that this entire game is a non-canon, having nothing to do with the storyline. Star Fox Command was generally well received, achieving its average score of 76%. Just last year, however, Nintendo remade Star Fox 64 and brought it to the 3DS. There is not much to say about it, really except that the game got a massive graphical overhaul and is now played in 3D. We could keep going back and making remakes of the old games, which would be fine by me, but personally, I want to know more about the story. I want to know the true story to Star Fox Command and find out what is the real ending.